Okay. All right, so our goal for today, folks, is to be able to uh, write the names and formulas of ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions. So last lesson, we were working on writing names and formulas of ionic compounds that have um, metals that have multiple oxidation states. Today, we're going to be working on um, adding the ability to uh, do the names and formulas of compounds that contain polyatomic ions. Um, polyatomic ions, I, I think you'll understand them pretty quickly here once I explain what they are. Okay. Um, so up until now, we've been writing the formulas of ionic compounds that contain only uh, monoatomic uh, ions. So in other words, it's like a single atom with a charge. A polyatomic ion is a covalent compound or a molecule or a group of multiple atoms uh, with a charge. So think of multiple atoms like all bonded together, then that whole cluster of atoms has a charge. Um, there are many different polyatomic ions. The next page has a list of polyatomic ions that will be used in this class. Um, you don't have to memorize this list. It will be provided to you on quizzes and tests. Um, so here's the list. You can see most of these polyatomic ions are anions. A couple of them are cations. Let's talk about what those two words mean. Um, so a cation is a positive ion that's formed by an atom or group of atoms donating electrons. These are usually metals, but not always. Hydrogen and ammonium are nonmetals that can act as cations. Um, but yeah, um, so um, anytime you've got a atom or a group of atoms that has donated electrons, they'll have a positive charge. Um, and so we call that a cation. So then similarly, an anion is going to be a negative ion that is formed by an atom or groups of atoms by accepting electrons. So the difference between anions and cations is anions are positive, anions are negative, cations are formed by um, donating electrons, anions are formed by accepting electrons. Um, anions are usually nonmetals, but not always. Uh, chromate, dichromate, and permanganate are all polyatomic anions that contain metals in them, right? So um, uh, some anions can have metals in them, but usually they're going to be um, non-metals. Okay, um, so draw out the models of the following polyatomic ions. We'll do that for our last page of notes. So first up is sulfate. So here's sulfate right here. You can see that it has the formula SO4 2 minus. So I'll write that right here. Oh, I wrote SO3 2 minus. Let's fix that. Okay. And so then SO4 2 minus, that's a sulfur with four oxygens bonded around it. Um, they don't actually quite bond like this. Like this isn't a Lewis structure. Um, this is just a, a simple model. Um, Okay, and then that whole cluster of atoms has a minus 2 charge, and we can see that from the 2 minus up there. Okay, so then next up is cyanide. Cyanide is Cn uh, with a negative charge. Um, and so we can see that's just a C bonded to an N, and it will have a minus 1 charge. Okay, last up is ammonium. Ammonium is NH4+. Plus. Um, and so, um, we can see that that's a nitrogen with four hydrogens bonded around it. Okay. Uh, and that's going to have a plus one charge. All right. Cause it's the plus and that's the only positive one on that list is ammonium. Okay. So then, um, Let's talk about how to write some chemical formulas from the names. So first up is sodium nitrate. So sodium has one valence electron, so it's going to form the ion Na+. Nitrate, we can see from our list, is NO3 minus. Na plus plus NO3 minus. Um, add those together, that becomes NaNO3.
aluminum oxide, sorry, ammonium oxide. Ammonium is NH4 plus. Oxide, um, that's an oxygen with six valence electrons, so that becomes O2 minus. NH4 plus, NH4 plus, O2 minus, NH4. So when we write this, um, we're going to write those NH4s in parentheses. Um, and then we'll put a little subscript two outside the parentheses. So what that means is in this uh, molecule, we have two of those NH4. Um, of those NH4 groups. Um, and so like if you were to count the actual atoms, that would be two nitrogens, eight hydrogens, and one oxygen. Um, and we'll, we'll learn more about counting those in tomorrow's lesson. Okay, so up next is copper two phosphate. So this is, um, Copper two is gonna be a copper with a plus two charge. That's what the two means. Remember that from yesterday's lesson. Phosphate, uh, that's PO4, uh, three minus. Um, okay, so then to balance it out, we're gonna need uh, two, three coppers total and two phosphates. So then when we would write out the chemical formula, it's gonna be Cu3 and then PO4, two, because we have two of those phosphate groups. So again, uh, whenever there's more than one of those polyatomic ions, you've always got to put them in parentheses, and then you'll put um, a subscript outside the parentheses to indicate how many there are. You can only do that if there's more than one though, right? Because remember, we don't, um, we don't put subscripts if there's only one of something. So if there's only one of that polyatomic ion, then you just write the formula for the polyatomic ion. You don't put the parentheses or a number outside the parentheses. Okay, next up, uh, we're gonna be writing the name for this. So Ag is silver, C2H3O2 is acetate. Oh, I've got the wrong one here, hold on. Okay, let's try this again. Ag is silver, and then C2H3O2, uh, that is acetate, C2H3O2. And so then um, this is just silver acetate. Next up we have Li2Cr2O7. So Cr2O7 is actually all one polyatomic uh, ion, so we'll be looking for that on the chart. but. Li is lithium, uh, Cr2O7, that's dichromate. Um, so this just becomes lithium dichromate. So naming them should be seem fairly easy. Let's do a little bit more complicated one where we've got one of those um, metal ions with multiple oxidation states. Um, so here's iron. That's on a nitrite that it's paired with there, so iron nitrite. Um, but then we need to uh, figure out what the oxidation state of iron is. Um, and so we don't know what the charge of iron is. We know that that NO2 has a minus charge and that's just from the chart. There we can see on the chart that nitrite has a negative charge. Um, so it's gonna be uh, some unknown number plus three times negative one and we're multiplying by three because of this three up here. There's three nitrites in that compound and each nitrite has a minus one charge. So some unknown number plus negative three equals zero. Well, that unknown number must be three. So this becomes iron three nitrate. Okay, uh, give the practice problems a try and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, there's a lot of metals in in these practice problems with multiple oxidation states. So be prepared to um, be prepared to write some Roman numerals um, in your answers. Let me know if you have any questions.